Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I welcome you to this midweek Bible study as we continue our examination of the First John, this letter that uh, John the Apostle wrote to the believers in Ephesus. He wrote it so that other churches could uh, read it aloud and all that, but he's doing it to encourage these believers to continue in the faith, to walk the walk, if you will. And he's given some of the basic elements of what it means to be a, a believer. There were false teachers that had arisen in, uh, on his watch, if you will. He's elderly, he's probably in his 90s, but he's writing to encourage the next generation, if you will, or the, these believers to continue in the faith. We looked last week at how he encourages, the, he talks about their little, his little children. It's really of the whole flock, if you will. But then he, he encourages as the fathers, which mainly he's talking about the mature believers. And he, he encourages the young men, which is basically representative of the next generation. He's, he's teaching us that church is to be multi-generational. So he, he, he talks, he talked last week, we looked at how we are forgiven in our sins and that is comes in the name of Jesus. And then how we're to, to grow by continuing to understand more about uh, the bigger picture of what God has done for us in Christ. And then how we are to have victory over the evil one. And that comes through understanding the Word of God and to remain strong by allowing the Holy Spirit to strengthen us and teach us how to follow Jesus. Well, now in these verses, we're going to look at 15 through 17 of uh, this is the second chapter of 1 John. And it's, it's a warning, really. It's, uh, it's probably a, one of the most relevant passages it, for our day that I had, that I've seen really and, and read, it's a, uh, it's it, it, it's a passage. Excuse me, I've got to uh, plug my computer in here. It's a, it's about to die. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, it's a, it's a passage, really about uh, the world, the. It's contrasting the the world the uh, that's a that's that's basically opposed to and organized against God. So I'm going to read these verses, 15 through 17 of First John uh, chapter two. Do not love the world or the things that belong to the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in him. Because everything that belongs to the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride in one's lifestyle, is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world with its lust is passing away, but the one who does God's will remains forever. So here he's He's not referring to the world that, that God created, the, the, the heavens and the earth, if you will. And he's not even referring to where in John 3.16 says, For God has so loved the world. There he's talking about the people that populate the world. So he's not, not using that. Uh, he's not, the world there is not used to describe uh, those two things, but it is the world that's in opposition to God's teaching. It's it's the the world that is organized against God. It's the world that is ruled by Satan, and he's referring mainly to a world view that is fraught with evil and false teaching. And so he, he, it's a stern warning to not love the world. To love this world is to give ourselves to things that are temporary 
and have no lasting value. So he's warning them and he's warning us, do not love the world or the things that belong to the world. The instruction means that we're not to embrace the teachings and values and approved behavior and practices that are contrary to the teachings of the Bible. And today we're, we're just bombarded with my way, it's all about me. It's, you know, whatever's right for me is right for me and whatever's right for you is right for you. There are, it's called a relativism. There's just no absolute truth being taught by the culture. And there's, you know, there's an eroding of morality and civility based on that mindset. So John's teachings then are as relevant, they're old, but they're as, as fresh as the, today's newspaper or, or news program. John highlights three world promises that cannot deliver. He says there's three things that the, this world view promises that are just lies. And his words then are be heard and heeded by, by us. And first thing he says is the world cannot give you what you need. He said, do not love the world, the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Because everything that belongs to the world, and then he gives these, these different temptations, but he, he's, he's reminding us that part of what we need as human beings is to love and be loved. We want to love someone and we want someone to love us. However, the object our, of our affections need to have eternal value. And you know, if we fall in love with this world that's organized against God, then we're on a path of destruction. And we, we see it all around us. People that are, you know, they're, they're, they, they've bought in to that the world can provide them what they need. John gives a stern warning to the, 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 these, to these readers, to us, that basically are addressed to the people that he's just talked to, these fathers, these mature believers, and these young men, this next generation. He's warning them not to buy in to what the world teaches and do not chase after something that cannot deliver. Rather than, he's saying to learn to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And then the second warning that he gives, that, that the world cannot deliver, is he says the world cannot, cannot and will not give you what you want. It... it, it it, it will not give you what you're wanting, which is it's to find inner peace, to find joy, to find true happiness, to find meaning and purpose in life. And he, he reiterates then the three temptations that the, the Satan used in the Garden of Eden. The personification of evil was in the serpent and the serpent came to Adam and Eve first to Eve and and you, the same the same three things he talks about the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of one's lifestyle and so in in the garden then the serpent challenged their pride did God say, you're not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil? And if you do, 
you shall surely die. And and the woman, the Eve, said, "Yes, that's what God said." And 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 the serpent said, "You you shall not die. You will be like God. That's why He doesn't want you to eat of that tree of knowledge, good and evil." And so it was. They were they were tempted then with this pride of being their own God, of calling their own shots. And then he he. He uses the, the 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 lust of the flesh to be our own God. He uses the lust of the eyes. They they saw it, the fruit, and then they took it, and then they tasted it. And in all of that, they're disobeying God. And so. Those three things, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of one's lifestyle is the demise of the culture today. It's, it's eroding our moral fabric, but right before our very eyes. People are choosing lifestyles that are totally contrary to God's design and plan. People are chasing after things that, that, they, that will just they think will satisfy the desires of their flesh. That is their, uh, their, their, their human nature, if you will, to uh, have more and more and more and more and more. And, the, and they, we, they do it through the lust of the eyes, what they see. And, it, and sometimes it's what we hear. But what happened and what God has done, though, in Jesus is He has... Reverse the fall, if you will. Adam and Eve then, because of their sin, were separated and, and run out of the garden. Well, in Luke chapter 4, Jesus came and was tempted in the wilderness by Satan. And the temptation was around these, these very three things. The lust of the flesh. And, and so Satan said to Jesus, uh, turn these stones into bread. Jesus hadn't eaten in several days. And he said, if you're the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. It was the lust of the flesh. And then he took and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and said, all you have to do is bow down to me. It was the lust of the eyes, what he saw. And um, Jesus said "You that, you know, that... Uh, I'm going to serve God and Him alone. And then he, he said to him, If you are the Son of God, jump off this tower, and the angels then will take care of you. And Jesus said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So that was the pride of life. So Jesus reversed the fall through His sinless life. He overcame all the temptations of the devil. Uh, place in front of it. But these three things are as old as humanity and yet they're still being used effectively to tempt us to sin and to believe we can live any way we want to. That we can be our own God. We can call our own shots. We can just live life, you know, Eat, drink, and be merry. Just have a great time. Live our own lives. Do anything we think we can do. But they're part of our demise. And so then the third thing that John says is a false promise. The world cannot give you what will last. Listen to what he says. And the world with its lust is passing away. But the one who does God's will remains forever. So the world... This evil and deceptive system of the devil is is passing away. The darkness is overcome by the light of Jesus. That's part of what John talks about in his letter, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. So the, the, the world is organized against God, has already been judged. It was judged through the incarnation. It was judged through... 
what Christ did on the cross. It was judged through the glorious resurrection. It was judged through the coming of the Holy Spirit. It was judged through the establishing of the church. It was judged through the millions and millions and millions of people who have trusted Christ as their Savior and their Lord whose lives have been transformed by Him. The world uh, is organized against God is a dead end. So what remains, what lasts, what endures is the way of Christ. And that's what John's getting at. He, 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 he warns these folks who, are, who he has encouraged and exhorted to, to continue in the Word, to, to be assured of the forgiveness that they have in the name of Jesus, and to walk the walk, to live the, the life that Jesus offers. Um, he's saying, pursue Him. Pursue His way, His teachings, because His life and His way is everlasting. And that's my encouragement for you, is that you will not pursue the things of the world. Because the truth is, they're, they're all temporary. You can't, if you give your life to the things that are fleeting, the things that are temporary, then it may, it may make you happy for a season. But one day, one day, you're going to have to face your, that you're going to face Creator God. And now we have, an, right now, you have an opportunity to focus on the things that are eternal, things that are everlasting, the things that we are laying up for ourselves, treasure in heaven. And that's what Christ does. He changes our hearts. He changes our lives. He changes our priorities. He changes the things we value. And what we value is Christ. God bless you. Uh, look forward to talking to you next week.